hi everyone that's joining right now. We'll get started in just a moment. I'm just giving it about a minute and we'll kick things off. All right, why don't we get started? So hi everyone, thank you so much for joining today's webinar uh, for the Master of Legal Studies program here at UCLA School of Law. So I'm Mary Puzikowski, I'm the Assistant Director of Graduate Studies, um, and today is our MLS Difference. So the MLS Difference is an alumni panel uh, with our full-time and part-time Master of Legal Studies graduates, and it is a great opportunity uh, to just to hear directly from our students about their experience, why they chose the Master of Legal Studies program, how they were able to either fit it into their schedule if they were already working or if they took the full-time um, format and how they were able to fit uh, the full-time program into their schedule. Uh, also to hear about the connections they made while they're in the program um, and a frequently asked question I know that some of um, our prospective students might be wanting to know is where they are now, um, and how their Master of Legal Studies program may have helped them in terms of their career. So I will turn it over to our panel members in just a moment, um, but I just wanted to give some background information on the Master of Legal Studies program first. Um, then I'll ask our panel members some questions, and then if there's time, we'll open up the floor to our attendees, um, and you can go ahead and ask them questions in the Q&A. Um, but as you can see um, on the screen, I have um, uh, just that we have two different options for completing the program. We have a full-time option where you can complete the degree in nine months. So two semesters, you start in fall, you graduate in spring. Um, it's a great option for those that are recent graduates, maybe international students on F1 visas, maybe uh, you're a professional and can take a sabbatical. Um, then the full-time option is, is a great option for you. We also have student athletes who choose to undertake the full-time option. Um, again, a great option for that. Then we have the part-time option. Now, the part-time option is really what this program is um, kind of designed and geared towards. Um, so 80% of our students are, are part-time students. They are still working professionals. So the majority of our students are working professionals, still working full-time while they complete the program on a part-time basis. So you'll hear from two of our part-time students today and one of our full-time students. Um, classes are in the evenings, just to cater for our students who are working professionals. Uh, the part-time program, as you can see, can run anywhere between two to four years, just depending on your preference. Um, and the format for this fall, uh, fall 2023, um, will be classes are on campus, but it means you can take one class at one night a week, so you only come to campus one night a week, or you can choose to take two classes at two nights a week, um, whatever one can fit into your schedule. Um, you will see here that the program will allow you to specialize in one of our eight specializations. So today we have students that were in our public interest specialization. We also have a student that was in our entertainment and media law specialization. But as you can see, we also offer business law, employment and HR law, two uh, very popular ones, government, national security, health law, environmental law, law and technology. But if you look at all of our specializations or if you've been on our website already and you saw a sample of the courses and you're interested in more than one specialization or you can see different courses and different specialization that makes sense for you in your career goals and your career interests, then know that general studies is also an option. General studies basically means you can pick from the entire elective course selection. And we can guide you more on that a little later. Um, I've also included on this, uh, on this slide just scholarship information. Um, the Bruin Scholarship, for example, you're automatically considered for when, uh, when you apply. And then you can also apply for additional scholarships on top of that, like the Blue and Gold Scholarship, government nonprofit if you work for them. 
Um, if you are a, a full-time university employee, then you will automatically receive that scholarship in replace of the Bruin scholarship. Um, but there are options there. I've also included a QR code. The QR code will take you directly to the application information uh, and you can see what's required in terms of the application. But that's enough from me. That's all the boring stuff. Let's get, let's turn it over to our panel. Um, I will, let me just stop sharing my screen so that you can see all their lovely faces. There you go. And we'll kick things off. So if we can first start by just introducing yourself, um, a job company, the specialization, and why you chose the MLS program at UCLA School of Law. And we'll start with Ryan and then um, Jesse and then Mia. We'll go that way. All right. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, Pacific time. I'm mm -hmm. not sure what everybody else is in the world right now, but hello. Um, my name is Ryan Carter. Um, I am a graduate uh, of the uh, 2022 class of uh, MLS. Um, which I'm proud to say was a uh, one of the pioneering trailblazing uh, uh, classes of the you know the trailblazing class I believe, um, and uh, I was um, in the public interest program, um, and uh, yeah I'm a journalist by trade. Um, I'm a city editor um, at a company here in Southern California called the Southern California News Group, which has about eleven different newspapers. Uh, in the area, and I'm the city editor of a cluster of those um, newspapers, um, a native to Southern California, by the way. Um, the a reason I took the program, well, I mean, there were a lots of reasons, but I would say, obviously, the, the bridge between journalism and law, I thought was like really important for me. And I'm finding that that is, that was the case then, that was the case during the program, which uh, when I was in school, it was kind of um, amazing to be able to, you'd go to go to school at night, and then literally the next day or that week, there would be some concept that sort of came up, um, or even just sort of some legal term that came up uh, in my work. And so um, it sort of really proved to me that it was that there was that bridge between the two. And even now, um, it's, it's sort of playing out where um, I can use the material and use the learning skills that I've learned uh, in my in my um, work life. And so for all those reasons, I sort of took the program and it seems to be um, playing out, um, what is it, six, seven months later. So on the other side, as Mary likes to say. So uh, <laughs> anyway, that's me. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Ryan. Jesse. Hi, um, my name is Jesse Kennedy. I use he, him pronouns. Um, I'm based here in Los Angeles, California. Um, I uh, work as the senior director of project development for a company called Thinkwell Group. We are a global uh, design and um, development firm for essentially theme parks and museums. So we do immersive designs, experiential design, um, anything where a guest can touch or have an experience, we design it. Um, I lead our global project development business development team, um, which is uh, folks in Montreal, folks in, in Abu Dhabi and all across the world. Um, and I was super interested in this program initially because I was trying to figure out what was the next step in my career. I felt like I'd been in, in uh, business enough where I didn't want to do an MBA, but I realized that one of the things that I really struggled with was really understanding contract negotiations, um, legal, legal, the legal world and how to negotiate the legal world, and also how, you know, we all play in across the globe from a, from a kind of legal perspective. Um, so I am very glad that I, I did this program in the in hindsight um, and happy to answer any questions. And sorry if you hear some little feet in the background. We've got a foster puppy here who has a lot of energy oh. this afternoon. So. <laughs> I, I hope the foster puppy makes an appearance. And just yeah. <laughs> yes. you did entertainment media law, correct? As your yes, I did. Great, yeah. great. Thanks so much, Jesse. Mia. Hi, everybody. My name is Mia Colacion. Um, I was a full-time MLS um, 
student, I did my specialization in public interest. And currently I am um, working as the executive director for the Santa Ana Educators Association, which is an affiliate of the California Teachers Association. Um, I guess for me, what made me interested in the MLS program is that I've always had kind of a natural draw to law, but I knew that I did not want to work as an attorney. Um, I really enjoy getting to work with just everyday people um, and the advocacy portion of it. I have, um, I guess I have a really strong interest in social justice. So for me, it was a way for, it. the program allowed me to um, continue to, I guess, develop my professional career being early on, it allowed me to have that stepping stone to go to the next level. Um, but it also allowed me to get a master's degree in something that I knew that I was actually going to utilize. Um, I didn't want to go the full law school route and then end up not, you know, taking the bar because I knew that just was not something that I wanted to do. So that's initially what attracted me to the program. Thank you. And I, and I was saying it to you all earlier, but for our audience, it's been nearly a year since you've all graduated and are um, now on the other side, Ryan. Um, but overall, like, what did you think of UCLA Law and the Master of Legal Studies program after your time here? Uh, Ryan, go fast. Oh, gosh. I mean, um, I... Let me count the ways. I mean, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, first of all, I like being in that environment. Like it was, um, uh, there was something about, uh, for me, coming to campus and just sort of being in, the, in an environment where there were so many diverse backgrounds, um, you know, mid-career, as a mid-career uh, um, journalist, it was, it was really great to sort of get out of the, the box that I'd been in and sort of engage this world outside and to do it at like, you know, a, you know, a top law school was, was, was cool, was, was, it was something for me, but then um, getting, you know, digging down into the experience, I just feel like it was challenging. It challenged me to, uh, and sometimes it was humbling to um, be challenged by the material and some of the, the learning that was going on. So, but, but all in all, I just, you know, it was, it was so rewarding to be um, amid people with such diverse backgrounds. And it's even awesome because, you know, you meet people from these backgrounds and like even Jesse and Mia right now, it's just like really cool to see them and see how they're doing on that other side. Right. And I know that these are people who I will, um, we will have connections with these people, you know, um, going forward. And I think that's great. We all learned and sort of bonded together. So, yeah. Thanks, Ryan. And Jesse, what was what was your overall experience like at, at UCLA and at the Master of Legal Studies program? Well, I, I think that Ryan was right on the money earlier when he said that um, immediately the stuff that uh, was being taught was stuff that was applicable to the day to day of of a professional career. I feel like from the first like class that we had, which was a um, was, which was an intensive class. Um, right at the beginning, uh, just kind of an introduction of the law. From that moment on, every week there was something I could take back into my career pretty quickly. Um, it, it, it really was a cool opportunity to be able to have a curriculum that at the kind of one level is broad enough to give you kind of the, you, the overview of the things that you need to know to understand the deeper dives and then choose to have the deeper dives into the things you're really interested in. I think because of that and the opportunity there, you're able to kind of form really great networking opportunities at a, at a higher level at a, across the entire MLS kind of program, but also you start to find the like-minded folks, not just in the MLS program, but in the JD program and the LLM program that are interested in doing the same things that you're interested in and in, in, in kind of doing outside of this. So I think, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a pretty cool, unique program. The students in the JD program and the LLM program are incredible too. And there's a lot of, there was a really interesting kind of welcoming of us into the program being the first class coming in. So it's a, it's a, it's pretty wild. Um, and it's pretty wild to, I mean, I was 10 years removed from undergrad coming into this program and it was really, I would echo Ryan again, it was really hard at first to get back into it. It's like legitimate work. 
I feel like I spent every Saturday and Sunday, like for several hours <laughs> doing homework, but it was worth it in the end um, for me. Um, I'm glad I spent that time and I'm glad I invested more in the outside reading as I did instead of just waiting to go to class. That's not this program. It's not just about going to class and listening to a lecture. Mm -hmm. No, that's very true. We'll get to courses in just a second and how you were able to fit it in. But um, Mia, what was your experience like? Because you were a full-time student. So what was it like to be a full-time student at yes. UCLA School Yeah, so um, my experience was a little bit different. So um, I was considered a recent graduate, but I had actually been working professionally full-time for two years. So my transition back to the classroom was a little bit easier. Um, I was able to, between scholarships and um, personal finances, I was able to budget to just take a year off, which is what I ended up doing. Um, but being a full-time student, you definitely are spending all day studying. <laughs> but I am someone who really enjoys classwork. So for me, it was fun. It was um, a breath of fresh air, not every time, but most days. <laughs> um, so I would definitely recommend that if you're going to go the full-time route, just make sure that you have that time commitment. Um, I joke with my, my colleagues that there's no way I could have done the program and worked in you know, done full-time and work. So um, mine was a little bit unique in that sense. But overall, I think what I took away is like, you know, Ryan and Jesse were saying, it's just so applicable and it's immediately applicable. Um, the things that you learn, I feel like I have a newfound confidence in my ability to understand the law and to hold my own when I'm speaking with, you know, opposing attorneys or, you know, other officials that, you know, typically I think, would assume that someone early on in the career would not know. Um, so I think that's been extremely helpful is to establish that level of credibility. Um, and, and just being able to pick up a case, I think prior to my prior to the program, if I were to, you know, have to research a case, I would look at it, see all the legalese and feel intimidated. Where now I'm able to look at it, okay, understand it and realize how does this apply to what I'm doing. So those were my big takeaways. That's great. It's so great to hear. And 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 just to kind of continue talking about that time commitment piece, that's a big piece for a lot of our prospective students, as I'm sure it was for all of you too, um, panel members, when you were thinking about this program was, how am I going to fit this in? Do, can I fit this in? Is that even possible? So what would you what would you say in, in relation to that time commitment piece? How how did you do it? How did you manage to do full-time work? and studying at night or and then for me or later on for you how did you manage to do full-time study uh at law school um we'll start with Ryan wow yeah it um I'm still kind of when I reflect back on it I'm like how did it wait how did I shuff, like you know juggle those things you know like how did that how did I do that but but I you know I think there were some some key uh some key points along the way that I think just really helped I mean number one like I guess number one, you just gotta know that um, you're in a, a a time in your life and you really want to learn. You really want to be a student. So, like, I felt like just um, motivation wise, like I felt like I was at that point in my life where I wanted to make the sacrifices to be a student for a couple of years in a while also working at the same time. So, like, number one, like my my mindset was just that, right? Um, but there were some like more technical things that came along. Like I felt like I communicated a lot between my boss and my professors um, on, you know, moments where, I, you know, if there was a chance I might not be in class that night, I made sure that like my professors were well appraised of that possibility. Um, and it didn't happen all that much, but, but, um, but then with my, with at work, I made sure that, um, you know, my supervisor knew exactly um, where, you know, I stood in terms of the week. So maybe if I had, if we had tests coming up or finals, I would, I would give him, you know, weeks advance uh, notice that, okay, look, this is going to be um, a, a, a tricky time for me. And I'm going to be, I'm going to need this time, you know, to study. I, um, and yes, I did use some vacation time to, you know, to, uh, particularly in that first semester. And, uh, and I, I know Jesse can relate because, you know, we went through that first semester together of the entire program. And like, 
Um, I, I know that I needed like, you know, a week to two weeks just to sort of prepare for those first set of final exams because I didn't really know how intense they were going to be. And they turned out to be, and I needed every one of those vacation days um, to prepare. Um, so, you know, using those days strategically um, were important. Um, I think, as Jesse noted, um, doing my best to, to keep up with the reading um, for these classes, because you don't want to be just sort of um, a passive uh, listener in these courses. You you want to engage, but the only way to engage the class and to participate and to answer professor questions when they come your way um, is to read. And often, well, all the time, it means reading in advance. Now, there were times when I didn't always hit the mark, but I always tried to make a good faith effort to do it. And so, you know, when the times when I felt like I might have been a little behind in class, you know, I just chalked that up to, hey, I did the best I could. I couldn't really get down on myself for, for being a little behind. I just had to make sure that on the other side of the class, I caught up. Um, so reading the material, um, I made it, I tried to make a habit of immediately, um, is, you know, after class, maybe um, take a little bit of time to review um, notes from the class and start building an outline um, from that class. Um, and from the content that was presented um, so that I could maybe down the road, you know, whether it was the following weekend or in the weeks to come, I could sort of maybe more formally uh, um, kind of fine tune those those things. So mm -hmm. all of that together, I felt like were just sort of technically on the ground things that I did um, to uh, to, you know, get through it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Brian. Jesse. Yeah, I think I, I was I was lucky enough to have a supportive employer during it to understand that I was where I was, and I think that's that's important. I think you want to have the support of your manager if you're if you're doing a program like this. Um, but for me, it it was it was hard getting into it, and then it felt good afterwards. It, like I totally didn't have the muscle memory of like being a student when I walked into this program, and I realized for me working. A job where you know you, it's a full full-time job and doing this what i needed to do to be successful was i needed to spend my weekends doing the work to prepare for the classes so that i wasn't concerned during the weekday about the night classes and i wasn't concerned about what it was going to happen at six when it was time for class right i wanted to be prepared before that week so i knew that when i was walking into the class there was nothing to worry about. I wasn't worrying at lunch that day. I was really focused on my work and then focused on class when I needed to be uh, at six o'clock that day, right? Um, so, it, you know, it, it was... It was hard up front, but building that um, building that that habit was good, and I think has helped in beyond the program to help myself with discipline in my work too. It, it really got me back into a good regimented process. Thank you. And then Mia, as a as a full time student, did you fit it all in? Did um, you have a life? Yeah. <laughs> I did have a life. Uh, <laughs> for me, it was um, time management was key. So even though I didn't have my full time job going on, um, I still was taking four or five classes because I was doing it only in two semesters. So um, you times that by the amount of reading and studying that you have to do and, and it quickly fills up your day. So um, I definitely had to set a schedule um, with myself, you know, the majority of my day was spent studying and reading. And then I would factor in my commute to UCLA because I was commuting from Orange County. Um, but I think the first semester is honestly the most difficult because it's a transition. And by the time you're in your second semester, it, it's pretty easy. You fall into a routine and you know, you know, more or less, okay, this is how much time I have. Um, you know, will there be reading on the weekends? Absolutely. But you can, if you're doing it as a full-time student, you can still have a life. Um, I promise you'll make it through. Um, during finals, maybe not so much, but <laughs> but during the regular weeks, um, yeah, it's definitely doable. You just have to be disciplined about it, um, like any, like any program. Yeah. 
you know, when, when, when they say you're going to give up your weekends and this is, it's not for forever, like this is, it's a, for a short amount of time uh, and it goes by really quickly. Like the semester is like fall starts uh, uh, late August to early December and then you have a break and then um, if you choose to, um, and then it's end of January, early May. And then if you're all like Mia, then you're done. Uh, so, um, well, then you get the summer off if you're a part-time student. So no, it's not, you're not going to give up your weekends forever it's just it's all temporary for a common goal um but let's shift gears a little bit let's talk about courses um you all mentioned you know your the specialization that you were in um but what was I guess your favorite course and and why um uh Ryan you can go first um so as a reporter what was your favorite course um and was that course applicable to kind of what you did on uh the yeah I'm going to try to talk fast on this one because this is a hard <laughs> question for me to answer. Um, it's like asking a singer, like what his, what his favorite song is, you know, like they have this. So, um, so there, um, there are, there were different courses that I, that were my favorite for, for, for different reasons. For for instance, um, uh, Professor Merrill's um, legal reasoning course, right. Where um, you, you sort of gain a, a clarity of thinking um, in, in how, um, in how to think, um, like a, like an attorney, I guess, essentially is the phrase, but it, but it really does, um, um, offer some insight into, uh, a, a certain clarity of thought and a cer certain legal, the, the, and it breaks down, um, um, arguments and legal reasoning into their various components. Um, and so that in any uh, um, form of work that I do now, particularly in in, in my job, um, I really kind of am much more um, disciplined about breaking things up and 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 breaking an argument up or breaking a uh, a bit of research up um, or a story into its components. And this class really helped in that. And not to mention the fact that there were a mix of cases in this class that were extremely interesting. So. Um, uh, but just that, 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 that ability to break it down was really important. And I use that in my, in my normal work every day in journalism. Um, there was a class on criminal, uh, in the criminal justice system, which actually was called criminal injustice. Um, and, uh, it was just this amazing overview of how the justice system, um, can turn into an injustice system. Um, and so we surveyed like, you know, sort of different countries, but also our own um, over a period of time. Um, but what was really, really cool about that class was just the relationship with the professor. Um, like I'd never been in a class ever in my life where like you have a professor who's like, you know, invites the class to lunch, you know, like, and I was like, what, you know, and so that like that whole thing. And so there was a sort of a bond there that that really I really appreciated um, with with that particular professor, Professor Olson, um, and um, American constitutional history. The whole my whole intellectual underpinning for wanting to get into law school was constitutional law, and I got it in this class. So I will forever be thankful for that. And then cities in distress, um, another class offered occasionally at the law school. I don't know how often it is. I felt like I got lucky um, with taking it, but it was um, that class be, uh, was sort of how um, how cities in America go bad. It was like a postmortem on like it was like an uh, we did autopsies every class on how cities financially just went go into ruin. And it was kind of like sad because like every day we walk into class, we'd be doing we'd be having these terrible stories about these cities. And uh, I guess I like that class. And so but it that class became the foundation for um, what's called a capstone. And Mary, Elsa, I, and I don't I don't know how far you've got into it with this group of um, prospective mm -hmm. students, but the capstone is basically like the culmination of your mm -hmm. um, work right at, at law school. And so this class became the culmination. And I was really inspired by the content of the class to to write my paper so sorry that's a long-winded answer but but those were sort of among the top right for me and and just to add there your capstone was also published yes and so so <laughs> thank you and mm -hmm. uh and that's become that's become you know uh like, like 
um, like an amazing moment from this whole experience for me that I was not expecting, but it's also led to um, some uh, further opportunity. And, you know, maybe down, maybe as part of this session, we'll have a mm -hmm. chance to talk about that, but yeah. yeah, it will be the next question. Um, but, but Jesse, entertainment law, what was your favorite course um, and, and, and why? I'm going to mean, give a couple of real quick ones. And from the entertainment side, there was two that really stood out to me. Um, one was called, um, I think I've changed the name now, but it was called Harmonizing Hollywood. And it was uh, uh, a entertainment ethics and dispute resolution class. Um, it was taught by uh, Prof Professor Anschel, who is the, um, the head of legal for Mattel and comes from CBS Biocom previously. And part of what was so amazing is that we had a man in the class teaching this class who practices and not only practices like was the like was the attorney in cases that shaped the industry um when you have a when you we, we specifically remember we we had a, a whole class on reality television issues and um and Jonathan and Jonathan talking about how um, he wrote the first agreement for the first season of Survivor, which was at the basis of you know this lawsuit. And it's kind of amazing to have these professors because we're here in LA and we're in the middle of Hollywood who practice this and like are making this industry what what it is. Um, he also and I think several of our professors did this brought in really great guest lecturers to us that like throughout the throughout the course um, that specific course we had a visit from uh, Sony Music's legal counsel we had a visit from Netflix's unscripted uh, counsel which was just amazing um, another course um, looking back I really appreciate now was um, art and cultural property law mainly because Angela Riley who's the professor um, for that course is uh, is pretty incredible and um, is a um, um, is a indigenous people's um, scholar and really looks at the way that we that who owns what from a really different way. You know, the other two courses I think that were more standard for the MLS that I really got a lot out of was a business our business law class. Um, I went we went through an acquisition um, at my company during while I was finishing the program business law class really came in handy and contract negotiation and contract contracts class. I keep that textbook next to me on my desk every day. So those are, those are probably like my four that really, really stand out. Awesome. Jesse, that's awesome. I want to take those classes. Um, <laughs> Mia. Um, yeah, I have, probably have like about four that really stood out to me. And ironically, they're all the um, like requirements, but I just feel like they I think we might have lost you, Mia. Mia, I think you froze. Oh, there Can you, you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, four classes. The um, the first one being the legal analysis with Professor Merrill. Um, during that class, I it, it's retrospective. So during that class, I probably did not like it as much because it was very writing intensive. But um, in in everyday life in my professional career, I mean, it has helped me so much in just to, you know, whether it's a document or an email that I'm writing, being able to just consolidate what I'm trying to share um, and convey, I just think it's helped me become a very strong and concise writer. Um, public and private law were two of my absolute favorite classes. Um, they're honestly just the basics of each, but I really enjoyed the professors. So Professor Kropkin and um, Professor Rich, just the hypotheticals that they would pose and really challenge you to think out process, um, just the legal process and more or less what a ruling would be in certain situations. Um, and a lot of the cases that they utilized were very landmark cases that have, you know, I'll even be scrolling through Netflix and all of a sudden there's a special on one of the cases that we talked about in school. So that's been really interesting to me. And then the last one was actually my capstone. Um, I was in the segment with Professor Rad and he was just absolutely remarkable. Um, 
I opted to do more of a presentation for my capstone rather than the paper. And that has helped me just get a comfort level with um, public speaking. I always have been comfortable with it, but I think that this has helped elevate, you know, my public speaking. Mia, you may have froze again. Um, Can you hear me now? Yes. Are you okay. just finishing up on on your cap, um, the capstone being helping helping with your uh, public speaking? Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, I don't know why my bandwidth keeps going in and out. Um, <laughs> but just short and sweet summary. With that class, um, I opted to do the presentation, and um, Professor Rad has cons has been a, a consultant on multiple Netflix shows and given um, almost like. TED Talks, I believe. So um, just learning the skills and being able to apply them in my day-to-day -day life, learning how to engage an audience, um, that is just invaluable. So I really enjoyed those classes. Awesome. Awesome. And so the next one kind of hinted at it, but a popular question is, is you know, how, how does the Master of Legal Studies program, how does it help someone's career? So can you speak about how, if, how the Master of Legal Studies program may have helped either career opportunities or career advancement or career growth. Ryan, you were kind of mentioning it earlier. So let's once again, start with you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I was, you know, I didn't, when I got into this, it was really, I just felt like it was going to help me in terms of sort of demystifying the law, which it has, like, you know, as a journalist, um, whether you're a reporter or an editor, you're, you're often coming in contact with the legal world in some form or fashion, whether it's looking at a legal document, uh, whether it's a contract or a court case, an opinion, or or just talking to attorneys, talking to um, people within the law. So um, it demystified that that uh, that interaction for me. Whereas you know now you know it may have been pre MLS, I would walk into a courtroom, maybe covering a story, and I'd be kind of intimidated, you know, kind of nervous. No, I, not anymore. And certainly in talking to lawyers, um, you know, the language of the law um, is something that I understand much more now. And of course, there are certain um, precedents that we learned um, through this um, process through the through MLS that um, that, uh, you know, I if a lawyer were to mention those in a conversation, I would I would have an understanding of um, uh, what I didn't expect was by the time we got to the cap the capstone project, um, uh, you know, I wrote this this paper, and you know, one of the things, one of the opportunities that we have in MLS is um, that there are things like uh, legal reviews, um, legal journals that come around, and um, and they and they actually are looking for for submissions, and they're looking for 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 um, uh, writing that that and 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 scholarly work that perhaps you've done as a student, and so I took I took you know I submitted my paper, the one that I submitted for my capstone to a publication called the um, Journal of California Legal History, which is um, it's a uh, it's a journal of the California Supreme Court Historical Society, um, and they were looking for submissions. I submitted it and it was published, and. Um, you know, once I published it, I mean, like that in itself was, you know, like completely out of the blue and like just such a like a great surprise for me. Um, but uh, literally a couple of weeks ago, I got a call from um, the president of the society who asked if I could be a, an uh, an editor for uh, the, the journal. And so, um, yeah, I said yes. Awesome. So, um, yeah, so it's. Um, you know, I'm still in my, so I'm still in my regular job as a journalist, but this is uh, an opportunity that I could not say no to. So, um, awesome. you know, these things can lead yeah. to other things, you know. Congratulations, Ryan. Thanks. That's awesome. Uh, Jesse. Yeah, congrats, Ryan. That's cool. That's Thank awesome. You. Um, For me, I think that the program, we talk about immediately being able to use the stuff we, 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 um, we were learning, right? It was able to, I was able to use that to show, I think, what my value was at, at my workplace. Um, and also was able to translate that into how to um, lessen the risk for projects that we were putting together. Um, and I think that our 
my company saw that as a huge plus and something that that we were missing that was just to be super frank was more than what an MBA would have provided, right? This is this was total or different than what an MBA would have provided. It was it was an ability to assess risk in a really practical way alongside of others in management. Um, I was super lucky to uh, to be promoted pretty quickly after I finished the program, um, moved from leading a team in North America to a global team um, and working directly with our, our lawyers, our paralegals globally to um, make really big, cool deals to make really cool, weird stuff all across the world. So um, it's it has helped me uh, tremendously um, just to move up in the company that I already was in and was working with while I did the program. That's awesome. And congratulations, Jesse. I'm glad they saw your value. Mia. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I'm a little sketched out. Um <laughs> know, let okay. me know if it stops. Um, so for me, I I definitely attribute my um new position to the program. Um, for I ended up going back to my position that I had left prior um to doing the program and I worked there for about five or six months and then was able to um, get the position that I'm in now um which has ha which has been a promotion um I just think that you may froze right when you were about to tell us what you thought <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me now yeah go ahead I'm so sorry I don't know why it's doing that that's okay um, that's okay what I was going to say is that as someone who's early on in their career, um, that's often what I struggle with is I may have the skill set, but maybe employers don't want to take a risk on you because you just don't have the years. Um, and so I think that the program really helped me bridge that gap and show that, no, I do have the knowledge and the skill set. And if you can give me the opportunity, I will build the years here. Um so that has been really invaluable for me. And that has allowed me to just kind of um, take the next step in my career and really land somewhere where I feel like I'm going to be here for the rest of my career, mid and end. So that's awesome. Awesome. And then the last question before I start turning it over to um, the attendees. Um, so if you do have a question uh, for, for our panelists, please feel free to type it into the Q&A and, and we'll get to them. But um, Talk a, talk a little bit about the MLS community. Um, are you still in touch with the people that you met in the program? Um, yeah, talk to me about that, Ryan. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, it's it's like amazing to come to something like this and just see your class, your 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 former classmates like right there and just say hello. Like that in mm -hmm. itself to me is, is, is just a cool thing. But um, I don't, like I sort of my my I think my learning style coming into the course was somewhat introverted. Like it was like I sort of liked to be on my own learning things um, or studying things. And while I still think that's sort of gen in general the case, I do feel like um, you uh, as a student will be in some ways challenged to kind of get outside of your own uh, your own sort of thing, right? So like, it's not just all about you anymore, but it's more about, often it's about um, studying with a team, a team, of, uh, a team of people. And in that process, you really sort of, you, you, you make friends and you, you make um, people who you will contact and see again. And so um, I, like that, that in itself was, was huge, but even some people like um, and there are there are two in particular for me that was like just completely out of the blue that I didn't think would um, become sort of a more bonding thing, but it it did. And that was um, I had a um, there's a colleague of mine at my company. Her name is is Penny Aravalo and or Penny Rosenberg, excuse me. And um, she uh, um, we were both working for the same company, but we'd never. We 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 connected with her. We had similar positions, similar job titles, but we didn't really um, connect all that much in 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 our day to day lives um, on the job. And sure enough, we both decided to take the program, and we both got in. But neither of us knew that we were taking we were we were applying for the program. 
And sure enough, the orientations were like, wait a minute, I know you, you know, da, da, da. And, um, and since then we sort of became closer, right? And so um, there was that. And then there, of course, there was Jacqueline Cosgrove, who's a reporter and an editor now at the uh, Los Angeles Times. Uh, and Jacqueline and I didn't know each other coming in, but it turned out we, we um, ended up taking, I think all but one class together in the in the program, completely by accident, we were in every class together because we did not plan that. Um, and it turns out, and I feel like we 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 became uh, good friends, you know, uh, in this in this program through this program, and we kind of bonded through taking all these different courses together, often having to work as a team on things. And um, as a sidelight, literally in our last semester last year. Uh, I live in the city of Pasadena here in Southern California, and um, we were it was we were talking before class one day, and Jacqueline said, "Oh, I just moved," and I'm like, "You know, well, where'd you, where'd you go?" And Jacqueline said, "Pasadena." Uh, where, where are you in Pasadena? And she, and Jacqueline told me where where um, where they were, and uh, sure enough, it's like half a block away from from where I so I think we were sort of joined now at the at the hip um but but it's it's a, such a deeper relationship because we um came out of this program so mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome that you're so tell her we said uh we said hi um uh, Je Jesse um I I think the it, it's just a it's amazing because now I have what like 30 something people who have these crazy specialties and have these crazy careers that now I know I can get to like pretty immediately, right? Like in the entertainment group that went through it the same time um, that I was there, you know, now there's, there's folks who, you know, some has shows on HBO Max. And then there, you know, there was a, another student who is at DC and another student who was at 20th mm -hmm. century, you know, like, so, and then there's folks in the, at Disney and, and, and in the real estate world. And, and so I think it's, it's kind of amazing. Cause like, it's just like, I, we know now that we can get to each other if we need something. And I think that it, that has been, th there's a lot of comfort in that. Um, I also think it's really cool where, you know, we don't, I don't think we see each other a lot, but like, I think everyone really celebrates each other's wins, especially when we see them on LinkedIn and those sorts of things. And it's still become, there's still that community connection for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. And we do, we do definitely post um, about like awards, promotions, anything that all that our students and our alums are doing uh, just to, for us to stay connected, but for everyone to see too. Go ahead, Mia, I didn't mean to jump in there. Oh, when I got you when you froze. <laughs> um, but yes, just while we get Mia back, um, feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn if you want to continue to see the cool things that uh, our panel members and all of our other students are doing. Mia, we've got you back. Can Go you ahead. Me? Okay, yes. Uh, let me make this quick before my bandwidth connects out again. Um, so for me, I definitely made some um, friends during the program that I've kept in touch with, which has been really cool to see them, you know, either um, just advance their careers or start their career some people that were recent graduates so that's been really exciting um one of my good friends that I made in the program Kaina Collins she actually encouraged me to apply for the position that I'm currently in now so I would have never really known about this had it not been for her which is really cool um and we actually are starting up an alumni base so our first meeting is coming up this month which I'm really excited to connect with um just the rest of the alumni that I haven't seen since the program ended so it's it's been really great that's awesome. All right, let me throw it over. We have some questions that have come in and I will um, just ask them. Um, all right, we'll start with, with this one because this is um, one I can ask the panel members. So um, for some of you, I did, like Jesse and maybe Ryan, you might be able to relate, but the question is, it's been years since I went to school. Um, I think I'm now ready to pursue what I've always wanted. What would you say is something that will help me to succeed? Um, I, they feel like they forgot what they saw in college, what they did. Um, what advice do you have for someone that's just you now thinking about going back to school? Also, you are not the only person in this boat. The majority of our students are kind of in a very similar situation. But uh, Jesse or Ryan, even in Mia, if you have any advice. 
I guess real quick, because like I was totally that like it was I, like I had not taken a class since college. I like honestly did not like being an undergraduate student and like was not that wasn't who I was. And um, and I actually felt much, much more at home as a graduate student than I did as an undergraduate student. I think because there's a th these programs and law in general, it, it's it's reasoning, right? Like it's, it's problem solving, it's reasoning. And it's, and it's, it's kind of a continuation of like what you're doing or what your life is. Right. And so for me, I just had to say like, what was the, like what made it better for me and like doable for me was like setting those, those expectations that I was going to do this for X hours on Saturday and Sunday. Like I would, and I was going to be disciplined about it in the same way that it would, I was going to be disciplined if, for my own work. I don't know, Ryan, what do you think? I think you're right on it. Um, there's the, there's the discipline aspect of it, but I'm just going to say like, it was, it was, I think it it's in a way you flip the, flip the coin, flip it to the other side. Like in a way it's that very distance that you've had from, from your undergrad experience. That is what is valuable a, um, it, which is very valuable um, uh, for this law school to have. Um, um, and I think, Jesse, you noted it earlier about just the idea of this interaction um, between uh, people who've been in the professional world for a while, and now you're in this world of um, JD students and LLM students who are, who are on the cusp of that world, but they've, they've never seen, they've never been in that world. And so you are bringing something to the law school that uh, is truly um, unique and valuable. And so, um, uh, in, and as a group, um, you should not feel um, uh, sort of as a, a, you know, you shouldn't, uh, that there should not be a stigma on, on the idea that you've been out of, out of school for a while because it's precisely that distance that um, I, I think is um, coupled with your career and the experience that you bring, that is what is valuable and that will will um, uh, bolster your your time here, your journey here. Mm -hmm. um, so just keep that in mind. I mean, you know, you, there will be an adjustment. There's no doubt about it. And as and as Jesse said, um, you know, you 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 build some momentum. You have to take it step by step, and that discipline really helps. Um, but between the support that the staff here at MLS gives, the support from the professors and your fellow students, who many of them are in the same, similar situations as you, um, you know, give it a little time and you're going to be fine. That's great advice. All right. I might um, split these questions up and just, uh, Jesse, this one might be for you because you kind of mentioned it, but are the, um, the person's asking an MBA versus an MLS. Like you mentioned why you chose the MLS. Can you kind of shed some more light on, on why MLS and not MBA for you? Yeah, I mean, I chose, I I, I was looking at MBAs and I, and, you know, and I realized that like it was, an MBA is teaching you the same thing that I we're doing day in and day, day out if you're running and if you're running a corporation or if you're working in management in a corporation. And and I really sat, stood, took a step back and said, like, what do I need, right? If if I felt like I needed to know how to do like a, you know, like how to, how, I, don't even, I don't even know. I mean, like, if I felt like I needed to do do accounting or like something like that, maybe I would have looked at an MBA. But what I really needed to know how to do was was how to put together for myself how to put together a better deal. Um, I think it's it's interesting when you take a step back and look, a lot of the folks from the entertainment side kind of lived in that producerial um, business development kind of world. And, it, and it's where we're, we're all trying to figure out how to make a better deal, right? Like at the end of the day. And while that is kind of, you know, part of the MBA program, I would say like, if you're doing profit loss statements and you're doing all those things, you know how to do it. For me, you know, I was like, I, I do this every day. I get, I have this, I can go to our CFO and ask them if I don't understand. What I don't have is a lawyer right next to me 
all day long. And so that was the, that was the better, better option for me. It's, you know, for other people, it, it could be different. It also, just to be frank, it's a whole lot shorter than an MBA program too, right? Like it's a whole lot like for, for me, the same value, um, you, you know, like part of the reason I wanted to, um, I wanted to take the, this program initially and I'm very happy at my current job, but, you know, I, I wanted to get past that wall when you were applying at Disney, where like, you can't uh, even apply if you don't have an, a master's degree, right? Like you can't get past it. And for me, I was looking like, how do I get past that gate? And, and it was like, well, what do I need? And do I want to spend six years part-time doing it? And, and that led me to say, I don't want to do an MBA. This is the better pro program for me. That's great. Thank you for sharing that, Jesse. It is a common question that we do get. Um, another common question that we get is the difference between the MLS and the JD. Um, so and an LLM. So I'll answer that part, but I might switch this over to Mia because I know you can. You were just kind of touching on it about that too, uh, and maybe Ryan, if you ever did. But um, a JD is for those that um, are wanting to say take the bar exam and and practice law. So the Master of Legal Studies program won't allow you to do that. It's it's uh, it um, the courses won't help you take the bar exam. Um, and for those, so if, if you're thinking about what your next um, what your path is and if it's to practice law if it's to become a lawyer and give legal advice then yes the JD is the best route for you if like Mia who considered it uh, maybe you can speak to it a little bit more Mia about how you came up with that decision between an MLS or a JD and why you chose the MLS um, but to answer your other question about the LLM an LLM is for those that already have a JD it's a master's of law um, and so you are required to have a JD in order to get into the LLM um, but Mia, if you can talk about uh, your experience with deciding between the two. Yeah, um, for me, it, it was kind of similar to Jesse's um, debate between an MBA and an MLS. Um, I was looking, you know, I was considering, okay, a JD versus an MLS. Um, but I always knew that I just, I did not want to be an attorney. Um, I really enjoy the grassroots aspect of, um, you know, union work and social justice work. And I felt like I would not have that opportunity, but I still knew that I needed to at least have that legal background. Um, I work hand in hand with attorneys every day. I, um, you know, go back and forth with, uh, with, school district's attorneys every day. Um, so I knew that I needed to have that solid background in, in law. Um, and so I actually just stumbled upon the MLS program in a Google search. Um, I was just kind of trying to see like alternatives to a JD because I financially too, I didn't want to be out of work for three years. Um, and I knew that I couldn't afford to be out of work for three years. So when I found the MLS program and it's, it, you know, for me, it was like a no brainer. It was the best of both worlds. I could take one year off, crank it out, get back to work. And it gives me that foundation that I need, you know, to really elevate in my professional career. Um, and the specialization was really the thing that sold it for me because there are other MLS programs out there, but they don't offer as many specializations. So for me, where I'm very involved in the public sector and advocacy work, I knew that I wanted to have a, um, you know, a public interest specialization over just a general employment specialization because I already felt pretty solid in my understanding of that, but I wanted to expand to the rest of my knowledge and, um, you know, just the public sphere of it. So um, yeah, when I saw the program, I was like, sign me up. <laughs> Please admit me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mia. Ryan, did you ever consider the JD? You know, I, I felt it uh, at, at this point in my career, uh, you know, it was, I didn't feel like I could invest that kind of time in, 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 a, in a program. So I, you know, I felt like the, the next best thing was, was, was still law school, but it was the MLS program. And it wasn't just the next best thing. It was the best thing. Um, I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad you clarified that there. Oh yeah, right, right. No, it was, it was the best thing because um, like Mia said, like it's, it's like, I, I had always had this sort of interest in law, but um, you know, being a lawyer wasn't necessarily in my scopes per se, I intellectually, it interested me. Um, you know, these cases were fascinating to me and I like to write. And so there were all these like sort of intersections that came together. And I feel like 
law school in itself might have been a little too um like the process of being a lawyer um mm -hmm. you know the procedure of being a lawyer um just wasn't necessarily doing it for me so at, at this point in my career didn't it, it I don't know that it was all that practical so um oh yeah this made all the sense in the world thank you okay we're about at time I know we didn't get to all the questions um here um maybe just to end um what would be your one piece of advice to any prospective student that is thinking about applying for this program? What would be the one thing that you would tell them? We'll start, we'll do it differently. Mia, you go first this time. My piece of advice would be just apply. Um, I was very much intimidated. I don't come from, you know, the private you know, sector world where, you know, I'm working with big account officials and all these people. I'm very much grassroots. Um, I had an education in the CSU system. So I was intimidated, but I was like, well, all I can do is apply and see what happens. And it has been life-changing for me. Um, so if you're, uh, if you're teeter-tottering, if you're someone like me that you just maybe wonder if you fit into the sphere, um, you do fit in and, I guarantee you're not going to regret applying and doing the program. Smooth advice. Jesse. Um, I, I, I guess I would, I think Mia hit it, but I, I think, you know, for me, I would say it's, it's not as intimidating as you think it's going to be. I think, you know, it's hard work and it's difficult, but it's not all Supreme court, like, um, languages, like you're not going to be like, that's not it. I, I, I mean, I wrote my capstone paper on Bridgerton, like the TV show. <laughs> like, so like, it's not that like, it, it is what you make it, but it is not the scary, scary, like, supreme court on the hill right like it's it's also fun and it's also pertinent to like whatever you're doing and then ryan yeah i mean i would just echo um what mia and jesse have said um it it it's um and it, it you know the the one thing is you know like jesse said you also do make it what it is you know you 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 um you have that power to do that and um, if you, you know, if it's a good faith effort to 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 get back to school and learn, um, then you're going to be fine. You're going to be mm -hmm. fine in this environment where people are supporting you. Um, the staff here supports you. Um, the professors do, um, and your students. So um, yeah, definitely, definitely go for it. Thank you so much, panel members. Thank you, Mia, Jesse, Ryan, for just being here and sharing your wisdom and your experience. I, I find it invaluable. I also just love hearing about where you are and what you're doing. Um, and I hope everyone that attended today also did. Um, everyone that's watching this recording also found some value in it. If you do love hearing what our, about our students, um, if you do love uh, to know about who's in the, uh, in the, in the program, yeah, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook and Instagram, it's at UCLA, UCLA Law MLS, uh, feel free to connect. Um, if I didn't get to your question today, feel free to email me, um, mls at law.ucla.edu. Um, but come to our next session. Our next session is a student panel with current students too who are uh, talking as they are studying at the same time. So they um, they have a fresh experience. But as a friendly reminder, we are enrolling admissions. Uh, so if you take all of their advice from, uh, from Jesse, Mia, and Ryan, go ahead, apply, give it a shot. Um, bet on yourself. You never know. It might just change your life. Who knows? But thank you again. Thank you for attending, uh, panel members. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Bye.